The movie begins by introducing us to Nancy Stokes, a 55-year-old woman who finds herself in a state of unhappiness after the recent loss of her husband and her retirement. All her life, Nancy has been an honorable woman who has adhered to the societal expectations placed upon her. However, one aspect of her life has remained unfulfilled her intimate experiences. Despite her being 55 years old, she has never had good intercourse. This is what she wants to change at all costs. Time to book Nancy a date with Shrek. In the first scene, Nancy conducts an online research and discovers a handsome escort named Leo Grande. She immediately books his services and rents an upscale hotel room where no one can recognize her. At this point, Nancy is a bit nervous about the encounter, as she has never dated a guy before, let alone be intimate with a complete stranger. However, she hopes that by spending time with Leo, she can finally experience the pleasure that she has been missing. The following morning, Nancy reaches the hotel room early and tries to settle in. Each passing minute increases her anxiety as the anticipated meeting approaches. But just as she begins to feel overwhelmed, Leo arrives at her doorstep. With a gentle request, he asks for a warm kiss on the cheek, instantly leaving Nancy impressed. She can't help but mention how much more attractive he is in person compared to his photo. As a gesture of hospitality, she offers him a refreshing drink from the minibar, and the two engage in polite conversation. In the midst of it, Leo notices that Nancy is trembling, so he asks if everything is alright. In response, she mentions that she feels embarrassed due to the significant age difference between them. Nancy has started having second thoughts about this meeting, as she believes that what she's doing is morally wrong. However, Leo, being the gentleman that he is, assures her that it is perfectly fine. He also compliments that she is extremely attractive and has a great body. To make her feel better, he even even kisses her passionately. As Nancy regains her confidence, she begins talking about her past. She reveals that her late husband was the only partner she ever had, but their intimate life was terrible. He never allowed her to perform oral intercourse, believing that it was humiliating. <laughs> what was he, insane? Most of the time, her husband would just kiss her on the forehead and go to sleep. After this, Nancy reveals something shocking. She has never experienced an orgasm in her lifetime. No, they're, they're a myth. She isn't intending to get one right now, as she feels too nervous. Leo understands her feelings and doesn't try to force the matter. Instead, he hugs her tightly, hoping to ignite the erotic flame within her. Following this, Nancy heads to the bathroom to change into her new nightgown, while Leo grabs a candy bar and eats it. When she eventually comes out, she finds him lying on the bed in a seductive manner. However, Nancy is not enticed at all. She instead mentions that she doesn't like the smell of the chocolate he just had. Because of this, poor Leo heads to the bathroom to brush his teeth. Upon his return, Nancy tells him that she has changed her mind. She no longer wants to have intercourse, as she doesn't think it is right for her. She tells Leo that he can leave with the money. However, he chooses to stay and talk to her. He curiously inquires why a beautiful woman like her decided to hire an escort when she could have easily attracted other men. In response, Nancy reveals that several men her age have expressed interest in her, but she rejected them all. That's because she only likes young men. Flip the genders here and this movie is a problem. Nancy then opens up more about herself. She reveals that she used to teach religious education but feels a lack of guidance and meaning in her own life. She also confesses that she has made sacrifices for the sake of her two children, but even then they have become distant from her. Throughout her life, Nancy has put aside her own dreams and desires, playing the roles of a dutiful daughter, wife, mother, and teacher. She feels as if she has wasted her life by always trying to do things correctly. Nancy also admits to being self-conscious about her appearance, influenced by her mother's teachings about vanity. However, Leo reassures her that it's perfectly fine to be confident and appreciate one's physical attractiveness. As their conversation deepens, a growing fondness and affection develops between them. Nancy is for sure on track to score that young dong. After some time, Nancy becomes curious and asks Leo if his mother knows about his profession. She wonders if he has a troubled past or if he ran away from difficult circumstances. Leo shares that his mother actually believes he works on an oil rig. She is totally unaware of his real occupation. Well, he does drill holes. He further says that providing intimate services is an important job, so he doesn't feel guilty or regretful about what he does. Hearing this, Nancy feels a bit better, realizing that she's not the only one with these desires. She in turn reveals her most sensual encounter to date. It was 30 years ago, when she, along with her family, were on a vacation in Greece. Nancy encountered a good-looking waiter and started making out with him. However, their romantic moment was 
was abruptly cut short with the arrival of a car, Nancy still thinks about that waiter today and regrets not doing much more with him. As she continues sharing her intimate past, she becomes more at ease. Leo senses this and abruptly kisses her. Surprisingly, Nancy gets excited by it and finally gives in to her desires. The two then make out and have a wonderful lovemaking session. A few days later, Nancy contacts Leo again and invites him back to the same room. She didn't invite anyone else as she was very satisfied by Leo's previous service. As soon as he arrives, Nancy hands him a list of erotic experiences that she wants to try for the first time. It includes engaging in oral intercourse. However, Leo notices that Nancy intentionally crossed experiencing an orgasm off the list. When asked about it, she explains that she wants to take things one step at a time. Unfortunately, Nancy once again feels unsure about getting close to Leo. Things worsen when her overly dependent daughter calls, adding to her worries. Fortunately though, Leo is there to help her relax. He gives her a massage and even dances with her to calm her mind. Leo advises her not to put too much pressure on herself to fulfill all her desires in one night. When Nancy talks about sacrificing her youth and missed adventures for her family, Leo finally talks about his own family. He reveals that he has a younger brother who serves in the military. However, they don't talk much these days. After some time, Leo suggests that Nancy book more sessions with him so that he can help reduce her stress. Unfortunately, this offends Nancy as she believes that he is only here for the money. Leo quickly defends himself by expressing that he genuinely cares for her well-being. Hearing this, Nancy can't help but wonder why someone as charismatic as him would choose to work in this field and what kind of difficult circumstances led him to do it. Nancy holds outdated beliefs about sex workers, which are commonly held misconceptions. However, Leo disputes her assumptions by claiming that he genuinely enjoys his work. He is not ashamed of what he does because he understands that it can bring happiness and benefit to others. Additionally, his profession involves more than just intercourse at times. Some women have asked him for massages. Some have booked him for a genuine date. Sometimes he even plays the fiddle at birthday parties. And some have even hired him to prepare food in the kitchen. As he continues explaining his field of work, Nancy gets excited and begins engaging in oral intercourse with him. This makes her more confident and the two once again end up having coitus. In the next scene, Leo and Nancy have their third appointment in the same room. They have a wonderful time trying different positions and techniques. With each passing minute, their relationship grows stronger and they tick off several items from Nancy's list of desires, even the fabled Mexican birthday party. However, Nancy still does not experience an orgasm. After the romance session is over, Nancy becomes curious and tries to pry into Leo's personal life, seeking more information. However, he firmly refuses, explaining that his role is solely to provide fantasy and nothing else. But despite his clear boundaries, Nancy's curiosity gets the better of her and she begins delving into Leo's relationships with his family. Nancy admits to having stalked Leo online and discovered his real name. Connor. She expresses a desire to be friends outside of their sessions and advises Leo to share his work with his family. Unfortunately, this invasion of privacy infuriates him. As a result, he quickly changes back into his clothes and angrily tells her not to book him again. He also warns her against contacting his family or disclosing his personal information, threatening to reveal her as a customer if she does. After this, Leo storms out of the room, but then returns to retrieve his phone. While looking for it, he angrily opens up to Nancy about his troubled relationship with his mother. He shares that when he was 15 years old, his mother disowned him because she despised who he was, going as far as telling people that he was dead. When Nancy asks what he did to his mom, Leo becomes even angrier, expressing his frustration at her making assumptions, saying this, he leaves the room for good. A few days later, Nancy books Leo for a fourth session as an apology and a farewell gesture. But this time, she wants to meet him in a cafe. While waiting, she encounters Becky, a former student who happens to work as a waitress in the same cafe. As they chat, Leo arrives, <laughs> prompting Nancy to create a story that they're there for business. The waitress then takes their order and leaves, giving the two some personal space. Nancy immediately takes this opportunity to apologize to Leo. She reveals that her real name is Susan Robinson and expresses her gratitude to him for helping her gain confidence and explore her sexuality. Nancy also mentions that she has recommended Leo's services to other women in her social group who she believes could benefit from his assistance, just like she did. <laughs> Hearing all this, Leo becomes happy and promptly forgives her. He then confesses that his mother disowned him when she caught him having group coitus with his friends. Even when they recently crossed paths in public, his mother refused to acknowledge him. Leo also mentions that he has informed his brother about his job, and the latter is cool with it. Right then, Becky interrupts their conversation and reveals that Nancy was an awful teacher in the past. She called the students escorts just because they wore short clothes. Hearing this, Nancy feels awful and apologizes 
apologizes for her past actions. She then tells Becky that she is a completely different person now, who has realized that pleasure is not a bad thing. All of a sudden, she also confesses about her relationship with Leo, and even recommends his services to Becky. <laughs> That's a little extreme. In the next scene, the two head to the hotel room and make passionate love. This time, Nancy finally experiences her first orgasm. After their encounter is over, Nancy tells Leo that this will be their last session, as she has experienced everything she wanted to. However, she wants them to remain friends, and he happily agrees. The movie ends as Nancy looks into the mirror and admires her body. For the first time in years, she is finally content and happy. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.